Hey, what's up you guys? This is Leo coming at you and welcome to my channel, Light It Up Leo. And I'm super excited to have you guys today. Happy New Year. Yes, we are in 2021 already. Okay, I apologize for the background noise because I'm switching my set today. Um, I want to have a new background for you guys and definitely new year, new background, of course, right? So today I'm going to be sharing something very near and dear to my heart. So make sure you guys stay tuned until the very end, because while I'm going to be sharing things that I do love about Vietnam, there's just a few things that I didn't love as much. Okay. And I'm curious if you guys can relate to the things that I didn't, I did, I don't really like. Okay. So Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. But before we do that, just wanted to wish everyone a happy new year. I hope this 2021 year is gonna be, 2021 is gonna be an awesome year for you guys through and through in different areas of your life. Whether it's your job, your family, relationships, health, anything and everything, okay? And I just hope that you guys get your expectations up so that God would do more for you, okay? Because I say this all the time, but in life, we don't get what we want. We get what we expect. So I want you guys to expect big things from God, okay? And um, I also wanted to remind you guys, if you haven't had a chance, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so that you do not miss any further videos, okay? So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So seven things that I love most about Vietnam. The number one thing, of course, guys, is the food, the food, the food, the food. So I have been away from Vietnam for, you know, 30 years, and it's so hard to find certain delicacies. For example, up, right, which is snails. I love up so much. So the first few months here, I think I ate up at least once or twice a week, okay? And I, I feel like right now, 11 months after, I'm kind of sick of it, but I know, you know, um, you know, I'll be back craving for it again several months later. But yeah, so that's first thing is the food. I mean, it's so cheap, you guys. Like, can I say that again? The food here, it's crazy cheap, okay? So, um, you know, eating out every day, it doesn't dig deep into your pocket. It doesn't mess with your budget much. And literally, I tell people, I just feel like living here, I live like a queen, okay? But we're gonna get to that later, okay? So the number one thing is the food. It's so cheap, it's so authentic, it's so like flavorful. Even when it comes to, um, let's say snails or any dishes, right, that has lemongrass or ginger in it, you guys, the ginger is like ultra spicy. It tastes so different from the ones in the States. Even the lemongrass, right? So I think because of the ground here and the dirt or whatever, but it has a lot more flavor, okay? so. Food is number one. Number two, um, the reason is how cheap things are here. Um, I, okay, I, I have to disclose this, you guys, and you guys might not believe me because it sounds too good to be true, but it would cost me, myself, seven to $8,000 max to live here for one whole year. And that includes, um, you know, lodging, that includes food, transportation, and the whole nine. Okay, so when it comes to transportation, you know that I don't have a car here and I can't drive a bike either. I attempted, <laughs> but it didn't work out, okay? So a bike ride to, you know, most of the places would cost me anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar, maybe maximum uh, $2, okay? On an average trip or typical trips. Um, so yes, isn't that amazing? Like I am just so, surprise when I looked up like the app it's called grab like we have uber in the states right they have grab here so when I looked up the bike I'm like wait 50 cents you've got to be kidding me right yeah really guys it's like that cheap okay and when it comes to lodging like my apartment it costs me about 350 here per month okay now I really don't mind disclosing this to you guys because it's not a secret okay and if you guys see this is my apartment right here I'm gonna give you a quick turn. Yes. Ooh, so this is so nice, right? Um, so this place, yep, cost me three four uh three fifty. Now, um, probably because of COVID, so it's a little bit, you know, less expensive. Um, but even if it's you know, um without COVID, it's not gonna be that much more, 
okay? And I love the fact that I get special treatment here. Um, laundry service, it costs me $2 every week. Yes, $2. They wash it, they dry it, they fold it for me, and they deliver it to my apartment, okay? Um, yeah, so I mean, if we talk about being cheap and things that are cheap around here, we can talk for days, okay? Um, let me tell you about like trips that I would take. Actually, you know what? Let me just wait for that, okay? A number three thing is I love being able to travel all around different parts of Vietnam. Now, you guys know, I, know, I didn't even know this, but Vietnam is so beautiful. We have amazing landscapes, right? Such as the uh, rice paddy staircases that you only see in Vietnam. It's native to here. And when I went to Sapa, like, before going there, I would hear so many things about Sapa. It's in the mountains, it's so beautiful. You'll see staircases and all that stuff. But the moment I got there, guys, I mean, I was just blown out of the water, okay? The view is just spectacular, spectacular. You'll see, uh, you'll see like 360 degrees, it's mountain. But the most amazing thing is they'll have clouds, right? Just um, kind of resting on top of the mountains every day throughout the day. So your impression is when you get there, you're just like this. Oh my gosh, like, are you kidding me? Yeah, so it feels so relaxing there. Now there is another city which is in central Vietnam, which is a very well-known city. I mean, it's been like this for years, okay? It's called Da Lac. And most uh, people in the South, like Saigon, Ho Chi Minh, they would come to Da Lac for vacation, like all the time. And that lack is really nice, guys. It's it's very cool, it's breezy. Um, sometimes it rains there, but people like the cool weather there, right? But I feel like Sapa, which is all the way in the north, is just next level of that lack. Um, so being able to travel to different places is very easy. You can take a flight. It's about 20 or 30, maybe $40 right, US dollars here um, on a round trip. Okay, um, or if you were to take the bus, it's like a laying down bus. It's very comfortable. Um, you know, they'll, um, pr a lot of times it's just a straight shot. They'll stop a, uh, at a couple places for you to take, you know, some rest and whatnot and grab lunch. But yeah, um, I've, I've taken that bus to Queen Young. I've taken it from Hanoi to Sapa and a couple other places. And I just feel like, wow, I'm, I'm, I feel safe right? Feel comfortable. And um, guess what, guys? It's only maybe $10 or $15 at max when you are taking these types of buses. And it's weird because I've never witnessed a bus where you can lay down um, because, you know, in the States, the majority of the people have cars and whatnot. And we just drive ourselves to other states, right? Here is a different, uh, different story. Most people don't have cars. So they rely on these buses to, um, you know, get them transported from A to B. Okay, so I highly suggest this. And before taking one of these buses, guys, I have to confess, I was a little bit nervous. I wasn't sure, right? Um, but <laughs> um, I just feel like, you know what? I'm here, I have to venture out, I'm gonna travel. I was a little bit um, nervous about traveling on my own, but I'm so grateful I did it, guys. So definitely, um, when you're in Vietnam, you wanna take the opportunity to travel from the south to the north, especially the north. They have so many epic sites. Um, I also went to a place called Ha Lam. Okay, Vinh Ha Lam, where you'll see layers and layers of mountains. It's absolutely tremendous, okay? So you don't wanna miss out. Um, the uh, next thing is, I love how nice the people are. Okay, especially, and I feel like Vietnamese are just nice in general, but I'm sure like different cities or different regions, they would have, um, you know, a little bit of a shift in terms of their hospitality, right? Like if you guys were in America, you would hear a lot about Southern hospitality. Like the people in the South are a lot friendlier. They're nicer than the ones up North, like New York and whatnot is because it's faster paced, okay? So I feel like, yeah, when I went to Saigon, people were nice and friendly there too. But in the central of Vietnam, which is where I am right now, Da Nang, people are just ultra nice, you guys. They're so friendly, so caring, so loving. And I've met some of the most amazing people, whether it's at church, outside of church, everywhere. Okay, and I've not just me, like being a Vietnamese person, but I've been told by many foreigners that um, Vietnamese are the nicest, most caring, the best people 
out of all of Asia. And th these people have gone to many countries in Asia. Okay, so I was like, wow, I felt so proud, okay? The next thing, guys, is um, I just love how there's so many opportunities here. Um, um, like, for example, I, I can work here as an English teacher, okay? Um, sorry, uh, what I mean by many opportunities is, like, I feel like if you are from another country and you speak fairly decent English, it would be quite easy for you to get a job here. Okay, whether it's at, at an agency or whatnot. And I've seen quite a few people that are foreigners who work here as English teachers. And working as an English teacher, you can make anywhere from $1,200 to $1,500 to uh, $1,800, depending on the agencies and the hours and whatnot. But, and you might think, oh my gosh, how can I live off of that? Oh yes, you definitely can live off of that because of the prices here. So $1, one US dollar is $23,000 in Vietnam. Yes, I can say that again. One US dollar is the equivalent of $23,000 in Vietnam. So can you imagine the cost of living? Like everything is so low here. And even Vietnam is rated as the cheapest country to live and work in. So $1,500, although it might not last you, I mean, it doesn't do anything for you in the States, but in Vietnam, you will live like a king okay your lodging is taken care of you know pretty much yeah like the rest of them your money like my phone in terms of my internet you know how much i pay per month maybe ten dollars yeah that's it okay so if you were to count up all your expenses a fifteen hundred dollars will last you a very long time you'll have a ton of money saved over okay and the next thing i want to share is absolutely the um how laid back people are here. Like their lifestyle guys, so coffee is a noun, am I right? But in Vietnam, it is a verb. Hey, you want a coffee? <laughs> when I first heard that, I'm like, wait, what? But yeah, I mean, people here are so relaxed, you guys. Let me paint for you a typical day for them, okay? So they wake up around six o'clock, okay? And they drink coffee, they sit there and relax until maybe around eight or nine, and they'll go to work for about two, three hours and then they have lunch. Their lunch is about an hour and a half to two hours. Yes, but minimum an hour and a half. And so they'll have their lunch and then they'll sit at the coffee shop again, just chilling, hanging out, being on their phone or whatever. And then they go back to work for about four hours and they're released, okay, for the day. And guess what they do next? They go hang out again at a coffee shop or a tea shop, a boba tea shop or whatever. And then, um, especially the ones that are single, you know? Um, if you have a family, you know, still, though they might even go hang out at Quang Yao, which is like a drinking um, a restaurant, okay? And these restaurants are the most packed. And you guys know how it is uh, through like two, three, four uh, o'clock in the morning, okay? They open really late. It's like late night snacking, hey, let's go grab a beer or whatever. And they'll just sit here, uh, sit there and just chill, okay? And even with the coffee shops, guys, I will see their parents dragging the kids or taking the kids there as well, okay? Now, I'm sure if, you know, they've got a family and whatnot, um, they might not go there as often, but the lifestyle here, they're just so hang loose. Now, when I went to Hawaii, I thought people there were quite hang loose, but Vietnam takes it to a whole new level, you guys. So it's pretty amazing to see it. And I never realized, my country is this relaxed. I literally feel like there's no stress here. I just work, you know, a lot of times I just hang out with my friends, you know, and they're they're the same way, okay? And, and most of the foreigners that I've met here, like I met a guy from Miami. He works online. I think he does trading or whatever. He's been in Vietnam for one year and I asked him, hey, would you ever consider moving back to the States and living there again? He's like, heck no, like no way. And I'm not saying this to bash USA or anything, but I've learned from here that even if people, even if people are poor and they live, uh, you know, on a very tight budget, but they also learn how to enjoy their lives, right? Every single day or throughout the week. Like for us, we have to wait, you know, within a year and then we can take a vacation, right? Two or three week vacation or whatever, you know, or every three, four months, maybe we'll take a long weekend break. But for them, it's not like that. Every day, they're relaxed. If you are, you know, at a high income level, you relax at that level. But if you're even at a low, low income, they make 200, 
thousand dollars, which is like ten dollars a day, ten U.S. dollars a day, they still make time to hang loose and relax, which is amazing to me. Okay. Um, last but not least, the last thing is I would say. I just love the fact that I'm so uh, close to Asia, like different parts of Asia. I love that if I wanna catch a flight to Japan or Hong Kong or whatever, you know, it's still very cheap, maybe $80 or $100, okay? And the next thing is I love being able to meet different foreigners here, okay? Um, I feel like when I have a chance to meet other foreigners, we just have this like special bond because we're in another country, right? Adapting to the Vietnam culture and whatnot and just learning from each other and hearing about each other's journey. That makes me feel so excited, okay? Now there's a couple of things that I wanna share that I don't really care for in Vietnam, but you know, I'm sure they're, they're making progress and they're making, you know, changes, right? As the years go by. The first thing is when you go to a, um, like a Binh Yang shop, uh, sorry, rice shop, which is like the smaller, uh, like sidewalk type of vendors. And perhaps, you know, it's just the way of living and it's hard for them to make money or whatever. But, you know, when uh, I had a bad experience where I came to the vendor and I was just looking at to see what she's got, like what kind of food she's got. And I was gonna go to the next stall just to get some sugar cane, then come back. I didn't buy anything yet and she came over to a sugar cane stall and she kind of yelled at me because I was just looking at her food, I, did, I didn't buy anything. So for them, it's a superstition and thinking, okay, if you're the first person to kind of like go into their shop but you don't buy anything or you just touch the stuff, you know, and then you don't buy anything, you're giving them bad luck. The rest of the day is gonna be ruined. They won't have good business because of you. So I was a little bit taken back from that, you know, where, and I, I remember it's just a certain generation like age group that would do that not the younger generation you know so i was a little bit taken back but you know what i just learned let it go right forgive them and let it go i'm not going to be offended i'm not going to think oh man my vietnam trip is so is, is so bad because of these people right number two public bathrooms oh my gosh okay so i usually like to go to the bathrooms i know i'm kind of bougie but like nice clean bathrooms like nice hotel bathrooms you know um yeah great quality ultra clean bathrooms and not a lot of the bathrooms like that uh here here are like that because i i guess because of you know uh the space restriction or whatever and they just don't put too much effort um or thoughts into having a clean restroom so i just you know hope that in the future you know they'll think about that as aspect more but not saying you c won't be able to find any bathroom and i was told that whenever you're in vietnam you have to carry your own toilet paper because there's no toilet paper whatsoever in any public bathroom that is not true okay the majority of the restrooms do have um uh paper like if you were to sh stop at certain um rest areas when you're on these buses then yes they don't have toilet paper but otherwise you're good you know you're covered before coming to vietnam i was like oh my gosh i literally have to carry a toilet paper roll everywhere i go are you kidding me but it's not the case okay guys and last but not least um i think just being on the bike um you know um sometimes it's, it's a little bit inconvenient <coughs> excuse me because you have dust you know flying all over and it's not that um you know not that clean in terms of like the environment but that's why everybody wear masks here you know as you're traveling uh even pre-covid they're all wearing masks so it's a really normal thing for them so having to learn to adapt to riding in a, a motorbike everywhere i go although i feel like that is quite an adventure as well too but when i first came here it's quite an inconvenience so uh, and you know um i do miss my car a lot i miss the feeling of being inside of a vehicle and being protected so anyways uh yeah that's all that i have for you guys today i am curious um if any of these points especially the stuff that i do like about vietnam which one struck a chord with you which one kind of answer your questions regarding vietnam okay comment below and let me know and also if you want me to do more videos like this right talking about vietnam my experience and whatnot which i'm sure i will be sharing but if you do to request you know on a specific um topic that you want me to discuss definitely let me know in the comments as well okay so anyways thank you so much for um taking the time to watch this video today i'm so grateful for you grateful for all your support and i want to remind you 
okay, that I will be launching. I have different services in terms of my mentorship program that will be launching soon. I do teach English online. Um, I will start my next, like uh, the intermediate, okay, uh, level of English um, class soon, which I'm really excited about because I feel like some people are waiting for that level. Uh, but yes, if you want to take your English to the next level, Okay, if you want to, and I'll, I'll also be having a course that shares more about people skills, okay, soft skills, which um, I feel like a lot of people lack because this is so needed in the work world, okay? So if you guys are interested in any of my courses, make sure you uh, send me a comment below or send me a DM on Instagram or send me a message or whatever, and I would definitely be happy to kind of answer your questions about it, okay? For 2021, guys, let's claim it. This is your year. This is your year to make things happen. I want, I want you guys not to want, not just to watch this video, but also to really think, man, I'm gonna start traveling soon. Uh, especially, you know, once COVID is over, right? I am going to expand my um, thought process and um, I'm going to expand my dreams and my goals, right? If there is a city near me and people always talk about it, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna make things happen. I'm gonna have somehow, some way, I'm gonna get there. Okay, so I want you guys to think big, ask big, pray big, and expect big this year. Okay, guys, so anyways, love you so much. And with that, over and out from Da Nang, Vietnam.